Good evening and welcome to season two of Know Your Rights, the show where you hear directly from lawyers who break down the law and explain the rights of citizens on common legal issues that confront Belizeans on a regular basis. To kick off this season, we will be discussing intellectual property. Intellectual property is very important to foster innovation and protect your inventions, whether that be music, artwork, technology, and so much more. These are very valuable assets for any business, and without protection of ideas, individuals and businesses would not reap the full benefits of their inventions. Here tonight to share information on this very interesting and timely topic is Marissa Longsworth, the in-house attorney at SIL Global IP Limited. Good evening and welcome Marissa. Good evening. Thank you for being here, especially on our first show back. <laughs> Thank you for having me for your first show back. It's and an I'll, honor. A happy new year to you and to Same all to you. our viewers. And um, we're starting with intellectual property. I need you to explain that <laughs> to the viewers especially because it's not something common for us here, right? Sure. Well, intellectual property um, may sound complex, but the okay. truth is that it actually affects every person, every Belizean, and we're going to get a little bit into that. Okay. Um, one simple way that I like to explain intellectual property is to split the words, right? So property, okay. we mm -hmm. know, is something that has the ability to be owned, to be sold, to mm -hmm. be licensed, and so on. Just like a house, for example, you can rent your house, you can restrict people from entering your house, you okay. can sell your house. Mm -hmm. So the intellectual property, intellect means product of the mind, right? Okay. So we're talking about property which has been created from your own intellect, your own innovation and creativity. Okay. So intellectual property now puts value on the products which come from your mind and allows for you to, to trade in them, to make money from them, but also at least to preserve your own moral rights as the creator. Okay, it's interesting. So it's not necessarily something you could touch. No, it's intangible, and it's that's what's intangible. specific about it, yes. right? And that whole concept of something not being um, concrete to us and putting a value on it, it's, it's uh, not common. And um, you spoke about value. Do you think that for the Belizean culture, do we perceive value from intangible assets that you just explained? Really? In, I think in some quarters we do, okay. but maybe not enough. Because in the business world, when you do an audit of your business, for example, the intangible yeah. is also considered as part of the value of that business. Okay. So yeah. when, we, when we start to look at a company that may be a design company or a production company, okay. we're, we're looking at what value does this company produce? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have equipment. Yes, you may have a building, mm -hmm. but the content that you're creating, that's where there is a majority of the value, that creativity mm -hmm. that's producing content is what's going to have that value. But okay. for even the smaller man, the average person, yes. there is yeah. value because anyone can be a creator. Okay. Um, and so if you write lyrics to a song, if you compose music, then obviously you're going to want to be able to trade in that asset. You want to offer it to a record label. You want to, to, to partner with an artist. So the topic for discussion is what is our exchange? What is going to be that consideration in this contract? And intellectual property does have that value. Okay. Something else similar that's intangible that we attach value to and is more known to us is stocks and bonds. Yes, yes. So stocks are also okay. intangible. We go based on what the prospectus of a company is, whether it's, it's likely to be profitable, that's why they attach a price to that stock. Okay. You get a certificate of stock, but that's essentially all you get. And it's similar with intellectual property. Yeah. When you register it, you get a certificate of ownership and registration, okay. um, but you still can't actually touch the product itself. Yeah. It sounds very broad. And so I want you to touch on your company, Sil Global, and uh, what exactly is your mission and what do you do? Okay, well, Sil Global, 
IP was intended to address the fact that IP is so broad. Okay. Um, in Belize, traditionally what we have are trademark and patent agents that operate via law firms. Okay. And the mere fact that it's agency only suggests that it's really more registering with the IP office and so on that is their, the core product that they offer. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to go a little bit further. Okay. We wanted to be able to advise any company any person, any institution, even universities about how to use their IP. We are capable of putting together IP strategies, which are action plans as to how you can use, protect, and use your IP in a way to maximize your profits as a company. Okay. Um, we also provide a service called IP audits, and IP mm -hmm. audits allow for us to go into a company structure and actually tell that company what IP they possess, yeah. what IP they use, and what they could earn, and what they owe for that IP. Because, for example, you may have, a, let's say, a call center. Yeah. A call center has started up. Mm -hmm. They have 500 companies computers in their, in their office space. Yeah. Now, each of these computers came with the operating system, Windows, or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. from the provider. Mm -hmm. Now, has the company taken the time to see whether they, they own the licenses to Windows? Did they actually pay a premium and get a license to use Windows? Could Windows come into that call center one day and say, look, all 500 computers are infringing on our software and you can no longer use it. So sometimes companies need to know what the state of their IP is, particularly if they're an IP focused company, such I as see. a designer or whatever it may be. Okay. You need that extra um, assurance of what you have and what it entitles you to do with that IP. Okay, and you threw out two very technical terms that I want you to mm -hmm. um, explain to us. You said the most common uh, forms of IP registration in Belize are the patents and the trademarks. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us the patents, trademarks? Sure. Well, trademarks, let's, let's begin with trademarks. That's the more common one okay. that we are more aware of. That's when a, a name of a product or service is mm -hmm. protected or a logo representing that product or service. It's registered with the IP office. And by virtue of that registration, you have what we call prima facie evidence of ownership, which means that by having that certificate of registration, you are considered outright owned of this mark, the use of this mark. Okay. So, yes. for example, Coca-Cola registered uh -huh. its mark um, hundreds of years ago, and now the mark itself is, is valued at over a billion US dollars, just the trademark itself, okay. just the value of that brand. So if we were to, to partner and we were going to come up with um, heels, we like heels, right? But we're sure. going to work out a deal with Coca-Cola that it's going to be the Coca-Cola heels, okay. right? Yeah. The value of having the Coca-Cola brand on our heels, yeah. even though Coca-Cola traditionally does drinks, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. The fact yeah. is the brand is there. holds that value, yeah. which means we can charge a premium on those heels yeah. more than if it was just some random brand that we came up with together. Yeah. Yeah. And so the protection of, of trademarks allows for you to have that value but also to prevent other people from branding products and services that can confuse the public. So if we have heels and we come up with our own unique brand and then someone decides, well, we're going to just take inferior quality and put something that looks like their brand so yeah. that the consumer will just pick it off the shelf, mm -hmm. then that becomes a problem. Oh, yes. We know about boot like good. We yeah. know about it. <laughs> exactly. And so that's the way that the trademarks can help to protect, right? It's yes. to, to prevent confusion with the public when okay. they are purchasing their products because we know a supermarket can be overwhelming. Yeah. Like all the products look the same, yes. the labels look the same, yeah. what makes you choose one product over the other? The brand has some affiliation of maybe the food seems to be healthier or you, you trust them to be more sanitary in how they mm -hmm. create the foods. Um, and so you make your choices based on brand. Okay. Um, and yeah. so that's the importance of the trademark. The patents now speak about inventions, right? So okay. when you invent something, if you can meet the basic requirements of it being a novel 
invention, meaning it must be new. Mm -hmm. It can't be something that existed before. Okay. Um, it also must be inventive, meaning that it has to have an inventive step that makes it functional, that also makes it back to new again. Okay. Um, and so that is the way that you're able to protect your patents, right? Yeah. And not to be forgotten is copyright as well. So copyright is when we have the protection of creative works like okay. music and publishing and that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can I can relate on both the copyright and the patents uh -huh. because I'm in a technical field. Yes. And so when I was doing my thesis, I had to pull from various patents and um, uh, as well as the copyright, mm -hmm. I am a musician and we always have to deal with the copyright laws. But coming back to what I want to ask in terms of how seriously it is taken here in Belize because uh -huh. you spoke about uh, the protecting the brand and, sh and keeping it uh, so that the market or the customers can identify this is the brand. But we see to what uh, extensive lengths other <laughs> parties would go to to try and make it look like it. And so, mm -hmm. so how seriously is it taken here? Because Yes, even in the names, you know, you say a uh, Walmart here with one mm -hmm. L, you say a uh, McDonald's mm -hmm, there with mm -hmm. small M, you, you know, those Understood. Things. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I, I can comment on my experience. Mm -hmm. um, my experience is that, for example, in the music sector, mm -hmm. um, it is, it's more understood, it's more well known, there's more exposure amongst that grouping of people. Okay. Um, when, we, when we speak of the business sector, yes, there is also more exposure. When we speak of the common consumer, there is little to none. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's, it's unfortunate, and I will say why, because when we look at the, particularly pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. right? Pharmaceuticals and products that consumers use on their body or in their body, yes. we can't yes. afford to have inferior products that look like it, smell like it, but is not really it. We okay. can't afford for that to happen, if, mm -hmm. especially if it has to do with babies and pregnant women. I represent a client mm -hmm. that has a skin oil that's specifically for pregnant women. Mm -hmm. And so we've had to do training with customs that customs can recognize their packaging and their bottle because they're so concerned that their name will be ruined if someone brings something in that yes. looks like it, yeah. sounds like it, mm -hmm. is not it and causes something to happen to somebody, Correct. right? Something, something, you know, detrimental to happen to someone. And so we, the, the awareness is growing because even on Facebook, I do see um, these occurrences where a store is named like a store in the States mm -hmm. and people start commenting and they're like, no, you know that you can't do this. Someone is going to call a lawyer and so on. So I was encouraged to see that kind of thing. But yes, it is still very common um, that we, we experience quite a bit of infringement in Belize, quite a bit of lack of knowledge altogether. Um, but it's a process. And, yeah. um, and yeah. for developing countries particularly, our process started late. The, the more developed countries started their IP structures and processes hundreds of years ago. Um, and so what's ending up happening now is that we are almost being forced into understanding it quicker than we can even plan for it ourselves oh, okay. yeah. um, and I think we, yeah. we may get into that a little bit later as well okay you know? yeah definitely I think after this first segment people definitely realize that it is something that is actually relatable it is but we have to take a very short break and then we will be right back with more discussions on intellectual property Welcome back to Know Your Rights. I am Khadija Usher, and our guest tonight is attorney Marissa Longsworth, and we are discussing intellectual property rights. So I think after the first segment, everybody by now understand why it is important Great. to protect your intellectual property. Yeah. But how do we go about now protecting our intellectual property in Belize? Okay, there are, it varies by the type of intellectual property, okay. but essentially, 
all intellectual property should be registered with the IP office, right? With okay. the National Intellectual Property Office. In Belize, it's the Belize Intellectual Property Office, Belipo for short, that's based okay. in Belmopan. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to copyright, for example, copyright is unique in that we are signatory to a convention called the Berne Convention. And what mm -hmm. that convention did was it allows for us to have automatic protection of copyright. So you and I sit here tonight and we write a poem together. We co-author a poem. Okay. The minute we have put that poem in words, mm -hmm. it is a piece of copyright. The copyright protection now exists between you and I as co-authors. Okay. Now here's a difficulty with something like that. Yeah. How do we prove it? Yeah. Because it happened in a studio, maybe everybody else went yeah. home. Mm -hmm. So how do we prove that the copyright exists, that we did it on this day at this time? Mm -hmm. And that becomes important because when someone infringes your copyright, what yeah. you need to prove is that you did it first. Yes. They yeah. could not, they have yeah. to be the one that copied you because yeah. you did it first. Okay. So some record of an earlier date becomes very important. Uh -huh. So despite this automatic protection under the Berne Convention, there are the two methods um, that I would recommend. The first is getting it registered with Belipo, yes. but secondly, the Berne Convention also included something that we call poor man's copyright method. Mm -hmm. And what the poor man's copyright method does is it allows for you to put that work in an envelope and send it by registered mail through the post office. Okay. Because, and, and people wonder why, like how does that help, yes. right? But what it does is that you have the postmaster register that piece of mail in his post book I see. to say that on this date yes. it officially passed through me. Yeah. So there's you a can record. always go back to that, that record. record. They yeah. stamp the envelope with the date as well and yeah. they send it back to you. You okay. don't open the envelope because yeah. you're addressing it to yourself so it's going to come okay. back to you. But you don't open that envelope because this sealed envelope is what you take to the judge. And you say to the judge, I protected this from 1998. Here's the envelope that shows the postmaster's okay. stamp of 98. That's interesting. So our young artists who uh, come up with songs, mm -hmm. lyrics and stuff can use this for a it's, method Yeah, very and it's, it's cheap yeah. because it's just the, yeah. the cost of sending the mail. Yeah. Um, and you just have to ensure that you follow the procedure mm -hmm. correctly. Um, when it comes to Belipo, Belipo's registration is like $50 per deposit. So you could deposit maybe um, a, a collection of songs or okay. you could deposit them one at a time. It's completely up to, to you, right? But okay. the aim is to be affordable because copyright being given its automatic protection mm -hmm. um, doesn't make registration a formality and that's the intention is that registration mm -hmm. should not be a formality for protection. Okay. This doesn't apply in the other areas like trademark patents and so on. You must register, must register those. in order yeah. to have the, the intellectual yeah. property rights enshrined in that registration. Okay. And how long do the rights last? Okay, also yeah. depends by, by, by the type of intellectual property. Okay. For, let's start with copyright. For yeah. copyright, if I am an individual creator, then the copyright lasts for my lifetime plus an additional 50 years. So okay. for example, if I, when I die, mm -hmm. my children can still generate income because my my authorship and my ownership has lasted yeah. beyond death, yeah. right? We know that that's something that happened with Bob Marley. And the Marley family. Exactly, yes, the Marley the estate, exactly, right? <laughs> yes, so the yes. Marley estate looked yes. at that and they're still benefiting after. And they have taken people to court for it. Of course, yeah. of course, because they have to protect, they have mm -hmm. to protect that value, right? Yeah. Um, when it comes to, to other types of copyright, such as being made by a company or owned by a company, mm -hmm. as well as what we call related rights, which are like um, sound recordings, films, and broadcasts, yeah. then it's 50 years after the, after the work was made, right? Because there's no lifetime to count, right? Yeah. Count, it's really owned by a company yeah. or something like that. Okay. Um, so that's a basic protection on the copyright. Then it gets more detail, but we don't need to, to go that detail tonight. Mm -hmm. um, as it relates to trademarks, when you get trademark protection, it, it protects you you for 10 years and then okay. you renew okay. at intervals at a 10 year oh, interval okay, okay. Mm -hmm. and instances when artists would travel you have your creative piece, you go to our next country, mm -hmm. you sing your song. Mm -hmm. Now you come back to Belize and you hear somebody else to sing your song, but mm -hmm. maybe they put it in a reggae version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Do the rights 
uh, apply outside of the country as well? Okay, well, um, rights will always apply anywhere. Let's just start with that, right? Mm -hmm. having, having practiced in Jamaica within the music industry and so on, it was very common for remixes to be done, right? Any, okay. any popular American song that came out, a reggae remix had to come out like within a month after, right? Sure. So there, this question always came up, am I able to do that? The point is, no, you're not. Because when we look yeah. at a song, right, like we have to dissect a song. You will have maybe one person who wrote the lyrics, one person who did the background music, one producer who sat and did the cutting and the editing and the final product on behalf of the production company. Yeah. All of those those factors have rights. They all have rights to being compensated for use. Mm -hmm. Now, when I change from pop to reggae, I have removed the composition, haven't I? Because I'm keeping the lyrics, yeah. but I'm applying it to a new composition of music, mm -hmm. to a reggae beat. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. what that means is that I wouldn't necessarily seek the permission of the owner of the whole song mm -hmm. or the owner of the composition. I would seek the permission of the owner of the lyrics. The lyrics, the part because that I'm, you that, adapted. The part that you're adapting. Okay. Sometimes the same owner owns all of these because some okay. record labels will just let you sign and say, well, whatever I sing in this studio, whatever I compose, it belongs to this record label. So you may still end up going to the same record label for everything, but in principle, yeah. unless it has been signed over, the rights remain with the creator. Okay. And that's also important for our local artists to know. Yeah. If you go into a studio and just sing on a track or just play on a track, if you haven't signed over your right to that track, you still own it. A record label can't restrict until they have contractually, and it's in the law that it must be in writing that you pass your rights over. It can't be that I say to you, I'll sing this for you and you could do with it what you want. Oh. No, we need a written contract okay. in order for the law to kick in. Yeah, very important information, yes. especially for a young artist. Definitely. We need to take one more very short commercial break and then we will be right back to continue our discussion on intellectual property. Welcome back to Know Your Rights. I am Khadija Usher, and our guest tonight is attorney Marissa Longsworth, and we are discussing intellectual property rights. So we were talking, and um, unfortunately, we had to jump to a break very quickly, but we're discussing now, um, you explain uh, if your song is reggified, <laughs> but um, if it is done in another country, do the rights still apply? Okay, um, intellectual property rights are territorial rights in general. Okay. So even when looking at trademarks and patents and copyright, the same mm -hmm. principle applies okay. in that you are expected to protect your intellectual property in any location that you expect that exposure. That can be difficult in this day and age when you post something on iTunes or something and it goes to every country in the world. So how can you be expected to protect yourself in every country in the world? Um, the truth is that there are systems in place that attempt to, to help people do multi-jurisdiction protection, but you still are mm -hmm. always going to come down to the registry in that country, whether they okay. approve or not. So the rights oh. are territorial. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. And I want to play devil's advocate mm -hmm. at this point, and I have to come back to it because the seriousness, you, mm -hmm. you make it sound very serious. <laughs> yes, it's all very serious but business. This, we, we, we're in the streets and we see um, DVDs that yes. get supplied, like, you yes. know, uh, they, they, it, it is not something that uh, I think we take as seriously as we need to. Mm -hmm. So um, in an issue of cable television, for instance, mm -hmm. we have so many channels. Uh, I know whenever people from abroad come here and they see, say, how you to get that? How you to get this? How you got HBO and everything? Mm -hmm. You buy the package? Package? We don't know about that. How that mm -hmm. work with, <laughs> you know? Okay, um, yeah, this one is a little bit of a touchy issue, but, um, but I will answer. The truth of the matter is that Belize is falling into the same category that a lot of Caribbean countries are falling into as it relates to cable and satellite infringement, right? Mm -hmm. We, we, 
the Caribbean region is in what we call the footprint of the North American satellite um, feeds, right? Yeah. So what we what our cable companies tend to do is to just pick the satellite feed and then redistribute it amongst all of their subscribers. Mm -hmm. This is wrong because under under intellectual property, every use deserves its own compensation. Okay. So you can't pay one time and then redistribute thousands of times without payment. Yeah. Now, the cable, cable operators and broadcasters are not 100% to blame. This is an issue that has come up um, through, it's become an, an international trade issue because the United States has actually cited Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad as infringing on the rights of their um, content mm -hmm. creators particularly through one, one cable company. Um, Belize is also cited in some reports for not um, obeying the, the infringement, well, not complying with copyright as it relates to, yeah. to signal piracy and so yeah. on. Yeah. So um, the truth is that we're not supposed to have these channels mm -hmm. at the cost that we have them. Okay. In any other country in the world, the expectation is that you pay for licenses from those programmers mm -hmm. to use and distribute their content. So for example, HBO being a premium channel that doesn't advertise makes its money from subscribership, not from advertisements. And so they depend on having subscribership through cable operators and so on that help to pay their bills. So HBO will be one of the first ones that come here like mm -hmm. they did in Jamaica. They were the first ones in Jamaica. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so essentially what is going to happen is there will come a day when the crackdown happens in Belize. We've mm -hmm. been under the radar, but I don't know if many people know that our piracy issues date back to 1980s. There are stories on the internet about us um, wanting to watch the Cubs, the Chicago Cubs, and that was the introduction yes. of, of piracy yeah. in Belize in the 1980s. Yeah. And that, that will make everybody Cubs fan of Belize. Exactly, yeah. right? But I mean, it, 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 <laughs> you know, we have to look at the balance because you do want to give people access at an affordable price, mm -hmm. but you also need to respect the rights of the creators. They rely on the payment for the use of their works so that they can reinvest and generate more content. Mm -hmm. And in the world that we live in, or phones or computers, everything is content based. Yeah. These people are making their money strictly from creativity, mm -hmm. from being innovative, from being inventive. And so if it's not like the traditional type of industries where you can pick up a product and pay for that and that payment comes into the company, when we access that content on our phone or on our TV, it's the same thing as picking the product up off the shelf. Mm -hmm. There has to be an exchange. There has to be consideration given for it. Yeah. And so that is what applies for cable, for music, for books, for you name it, it mm -hmm. applies, right? And so people will always have to remember that intellectual property is everywhere. It it is a, it's sort of one of those underlying currents that exist in every aspect of business, every aspect of life. Um, but because it is technical, it tends to, to go past many people, but it's there and it's a reality. Yeah. And um, if we as private, private citizens and private rights holders don't do something about it, mm -hmm. that's when government intervention happens, like what's happening with the cable issues. And we're put under immense pressure, pressure. To, to meet compliance standards that maybe are even too ambitious for our country at this time because of yeah. the amount of legislation that needs to change and the, the general culture that needs to change. And that includes the use of music at events, in restaurants, yeah. in supermarkets, yeah. and so on. So there, there's a lot to be done in the field, yeah. but, um, but it, it's not something we're gonna get away from. It's only yeah. going to get more um, intense yeah. for Belize. Yeah. Well, Marisa, I definitely wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. You have a lot of work ahead <laughs> of you. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, we have come to the end of our show for tonight. Thank you, Marissa, for joining us and providing important information on tonight's topic. Next week, we will be joined by another attorney who will explain your rights on another interesting topic. Tonight's episode of Know Your Rights repeats at 1 p.m. on Sunday on Channel 7, and it will also be available for your viewing on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for watching, and have a good night. That was a very good record. <laughs>